So yeah, that's it. That is my top three steelbooks that I would love to own, but probably won't because they're far out of print and hard to get. So let's just run through them again. The Iron Man Future Shop Edition, the Metropolis Massive Cinema Edition, and the Holy Grail Thor, the HMV exclusive steelbook edition of Thor, which is just so far out of print now. It's so hard to find for a decent price. It's just, uh, yeah, it's heartbreaking really, because I really want it, but I'm never going to be able to have it. I do have the steelbook of the second film, Thor The Dark World, which is cool, you know, I like this steelbook, had a lot of flack, you know, a lot of people didn't like it, I really like it, but, um, otherwise, I just, I don't know, I feel like, um, my collection is never going to truly be complete until I have that Thor steelbook, but I doubt it's going to happen, so, either way, uh, thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed this video, and, uh, I'll see you next time. Hello Connie, it's Luke, a guy just flew through the goddamn window and landed on the floor, a guy flew through the window and landed on the floor, I'm not kidding, uh, uh, okay, you'll be here as soon as you can, okay, he looks unconscious but if he wakes up I'll try and hold him down, okay I'll see you soon. Hello? Oh God. And you are? I'm Luke Ryan, who the hell are you? I am Thor of Asgard. No. It can't be. Wait. It is you. The long hair, the red cape, which looks nothing like a blanket. All you're missing is your- My hammer. Have you seen it? I dropped it whilst taking a leisurely flight over my homeland of Sweden. Um, it's actually Norway. Whatever. Now, do you have a hammer? I do have one, but as guarded as this might sound, you got to promise me not to hit me in the head with it because I've had a splitting headache for the past week now and my skull is really full. Yes, of course. Just bring me a hammer. Okay, I trust you. I'll go get it now. He's so pathetic and tiny. Here it is. Ah. Thank you. Luke? I am not Luke. I am Thor of Asgard, brother of Loki. Loki? That guy's an asshole. He's my brother. He killed 80 people in two days. He's adopted. Does mother know you weareth her drapes? Watch your mouth, woman. These are fine drapes. Thank you, Luke of Ryan. I'll be leaving you now.
You dropped your cape! Just dropped his cape. I'll go get it. Thanks. Well, that was a strange one. What? Hello, welcome back to the Blurry Brothers channel. I'm Luke, and today I'm reviewing Thor from 2011, if you hadn't guessed yet, um, as part of our superhero week. Um, go check out Robbie's video from Monday. Awesome skit there, the super nerd skit, and him talking about Batman the Animated Series, and Ryan has got a really cool video planned for Friday as well. But here it is, Thor. I really like Thor. Um, it grew on me. I watched it first, and I kind of, you know, thought it was okay. And then I watched The Avengers and I was like, wow, okay, I want to watch it again. So I watched Thor again after I'd seen The Avengers in 2012 and I had a new appreciation for it. And um, for me, it's really an underrated one because a lot of people don't really like Thor. They prefer maybe Captain America or the Iron Man movies. But I'm a big fan of Thor. In fact, Thor The Dark World is still my favorite of the standalone Avengers movies, including all the Iron Man ones. Um, but the first one I really like, we see Chris Hemsworth uh, playing Thor perfectly cast in my opinion. In fact, the whole cast of this film is fantastic. We have um, Idris Elba as Heimdall, he's fantastic. We have Natalie Portman, uh, Kat Dennings, who people kind of don't really like in the Thor movies, but I like Kat Dennings and I thought she did a, a good job with the limited role she had. We have Stellan Skarsgård as well in the prominent role. Uh, we have Anthony Hopkins, you know, playing uh, Thor's dad, and we have, uh, of course, Loki. Uh, what's his name? Tom Hiddleston who uh, has really become a popular character in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. I like the story of this, you know, it puts Thor in a fish out of water kind of story. He gets sent down to Earth, his father casts him out in a pretty emotional scene actually. Um, you know, Thor's kind of the heir to the throne in Asgard and basically he he messes up and so he gets uh, banished from Asgard, gets sent down to Earth where he ends up in this small New Mexico town and he meets Natalie Portman who's kind of like a a scientist and she's always looking to the stars and then she finds out that there's more to to life than earth and of course I, I think the the romance between Thor and Jane is probably a little rushed it kinda it seems to make the connection a bit too quickly for me but I really love this film I love the uh, his hammer I don't know even how, how you pronounce it but I think it's a great kind of tool for his character and and how he has to kind of pull out of the ground when it's, he's trying to find it on Earth and everyone's trying to pull it out and there's that great little Stan Lee cameo when he's in the pickup truck trying to pull it out, which is great. I love the Stan Lee cameos. But yeah, this is just an awesome film. The Blu-ray I want to quickly review for you guys. Uh, I'm not going to show you this steelbook in depth, but this is the, the famous steelbook that I got a couple of months ago. Absolutely love it. It's fantastic. It's all black. It looks fantastic. We've got Thor there, uh, glossy on the steel. And then the rest is matte, and the uh, the title is embossed. Just looks awesome. I love it, and I'm so glad to finally have it. And then on the inside, we have um, some inside artwork of the main characters in the film, uh, played by Anthony Hopkins, Chris Hemsworth, Natalie Portman, and Tom Hiddleston, all represented there on the inside artwork, which is great. Uh, it comes with a DVD and digital copy, and of course the Blu-ray. Now the Blu-ray to start off with, the menu is awesome. Um, it's basically Thor's hammer flying through the universe, and you see it fly through the Milky Way, and it's like going through portals and stuff. And it's actually a looping menu, and it's done really well. But just the the epic visual of that and the music to go along with it as the menu, I thought it was just a really cool menu. I mean, I don't really, I guess I do kind of think about menus a lot. That if if it impresses me, I really like it. But um, yeah, great menu, which is a really random aside, but. The, the special features, we have the consultant, uh, Marvel one-shot short, which is a really cool one that links back to um, kind of a, I think it was a post credit scene in The Incredible Hulk, uh, technically the first movie in the Marvel Cinematic Universe that they started back in 2008, I believe, um, with a brief appearance from Robert Downey Jr. and also um, 
I forget his name now, but Agent Coulson appears in that short, so a good little short. There's tons of featurettes, uh, amounting to around 45 minutes, I think, something like that, about how they created the world. And what I really like about this film is that a lot of it, there's a lot of CGI, but a lot of it is actually practical. A lot of the Asgard sets are, are done for real, and you see that in the behind the scenes. And I honestly kind of just assumed they were digital sets, but it really impressed me, and I, I appreciated them putting that much money into it. Um, and then Kenneth Branagh, who is the director, was a really kind of offbeat choice, I think. Someone who'd mainly done like Shakespeare movies and stuff like that. Um, but I think it was a great fit and a really out-of-the-box kind of um, pick for the director for this film. And it worked really well, in my opinion. Uh, the featurettes are great. They go into the casting and the special effects. And again, the, even the New Mexico town, they built from scratch. You know, they, Well, they built over an, an older kind of um, place that was there. So they put a lot of um, money into practical production design in this film, which I didn't really realize until I watched the featurettes. So that was really cool. There's 25 minutes of deleted scenes with um, commentary from Kenneth Branagh. I can see why they were left on the cutting room floor, but it's great to hear his thoughts about them. And then the commentary track from Kenneth Branagh himself from the full movie I did listen to last night, and it was a really great one. He's really clear, and you can tell his vision was very succinct, and he knew what he wanted to do with this film, and you know, people speak very highly of him in the featurettes as well. Um, I think there's a few trailers and other things like that, but yeah, that's mainly it for the special features. I thought a really great little compact package of special features and the movie just looks fantastic and blurry and, and sounds great as do most of the big Marvel movies I think so that's my review of the Thor Blu-ray and Thor itself still prefer the second movie but um, I really like this one there's a bit of a charm to it I think and uh, Chris Hemsworth again is just perfect as Thor can't wait to see him again in Avengers Age of Ultron next year so thank you for watching my review I hope you enjoyed it and stay tuned for more superhero stuff for the rest of the week on the Blue Brothers channel thanks for watching You dropped your kid. He caved. He caved. <laughs> Does the mother know you weareth her drapes? <laughs> Hello? <laughs> Why am I doing that now? I don't know. <laughs> Why aren't you looking at me? To, to not distract you. <laughs> I'm not looking at you. No, no, but still. You pick up on these things. Can see you. Still seeing you. I can still see you.